everyone, and welcome to week three of our Your Crowd Grand Opening. We are so excited to have so many of you from our community here today and hope you felt welcomed as you came in. Whether you're joining us here in person or watching online, we are so glad you're here. If you're joining us online, why not take a moment right now to share this experience on whatever platform you're watching on. It goes a long way in helping us spread the word about this amazing community of faith we have. If you're new here and haven't had a chance to connect with someone on our team, we'd love to meet you. If you're joining us in person after today's experience, head to the connection wall in our lobby to meet some of our pastoral teams and volunteers in blue shirts. They're here to answer any questions you may have and help you find a way to get connected. And if you're joining us online, we'd love to hear from you as well and invite you to reach out to our online hosts in the chat window right now. We'd love to be able to answer any questions you may have or pray with you today. Here at Central, our vision is simple, helping you connect with God and with others. You're going to hear us mention that a lot because everything we do here revolves around those two things. Today, to help you connect with God, we want to encourage you to open your heart to experience the love God has for you as we worship together. Connection to God can look different for everyone, but we want you to know this is a safe place to explore your faith and relationship with Him. To help you connect with others, we have groups, and we're pretty passionate about groups around here. Our groups are designed with you in mind and how we can best serve you in your next steps. So to make sure we have something for everyone, we have four types of groups here at Central. Community groups, small groups, interest groups, and support groups. Each group is led by a leader that is committed in helping you connect to God and others that are on the same journey. To find out more about groups, you can visit our website at centralcc.ca forward slash groups and search the list of available options. With so many options, we know there's something for you. One group we want to highlight is a new community group that is happening on Thursdays right here in our cafe. We understand how it can be both exciting and a little daunting to attend a large church and find your place. It doesn't quite feel like home until someone recognizes you or remembers your name. So we have created a group called A Place For You to help you feel connected and a part of this amazing community. This four-week group is hosted by Pastor Bill and Pastor Janet, and they will explore what it looks like to have a place for God in your life, a place for belonging, and a place of purpose. Whether you're new to Central or just looking to make some connections, we know this group will be a great place to start. To register, you can head to the connection wall in the lobby after the experience or visit our website, centralcc.ca forward slash connect, and you will find the information on how to register for this group there. So today is our final week of our grand opening celebrations, and it is special because you're here. One of the main purposes of this building is to have a space to invite our community and provide a place where you can belong. So today, after our experience, join us outside for a time of celebration and connection. We have some food trucks, bouncy castles for the kids, fire trucks, and emergency vehicles for you and your family to enjoy. We would love to meet you as we celebrate this amazing community we have here in the Niagara region. We want you to know that this is a place for you. If you have any questions about anything we've mentioned here today, you can text them to our number at 905-937-5610 or you head over to our website, centralcc.ca forward slash connect. It's your best resource to stay up to date on everything we have talked about today. You can also scan the QR code on the seat back in front of you and complete a connection card. And as always, you can head out to the connection wall following the experience and we'd love to have a conversation and help you in any way that we can. So that's all for me today. Our experience is about to begin. So why don't you stand with me as we worship together? Good morning. It's always so good to see each and every one of you. Thanks for being here. If you are new or you're joining us online, thank you for being with us today. We hope you're encouraged by the music we're going to sing. We hope you will sing with us, maybe join in and worship. That's what we just love to do. So let's do that together.
each and every person in this room, God. And this is our way of loving you back. One little way is to sing. God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for knowing each person in this room. We're gonna sing this song called The Blessing. And it's our intention today to sing this over you, that you would encourage, that you would know that our God, the creator of this world, loves you and is for you and is with you today. Lord bless you.
God bless you. That word blessing, it's a proclamation, it is a declaration. And for us in this place today, it is not rooted in wishful thinking, something we hope comes to pass. It is rooted in the nature and the character of a living God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you just need to know that today when you walked into this place, I don't know what you expected, but I hope you feel the favor and the blessing of God that this was a space that was created for him to be experienced and to be explored and to be felt. But it's also a place of blessing for you. And so today I pray a blessing on you, whether this is your first time with us or you've been coming your entire life. May God's blessing rest on you and on your children and on your children's children, for we are here for generations to come. And so God, we just ask for your amazing blessing. We feel it, we sense it, but I pray that it becomes so personal that we would know it. Your favor, God. Thank you that we have your incredible book that tells us this, how you have blessed so many generations before us and how you're blessing right now in this place. We also pray into the future, God that in the Niagara region and around the world, your blessing would begin to flow like a mighty river that could not be contained, could not be stopped, that your love, your peace, your power, God, would go into a world that so desperately needs it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, amen. I bless you, I bless you. I'm gonna ask you to remain standing for just a quick moment. Uh, today we have a really good, special, a lot of very special guests, but one of our guests is my dear friend and our leader. Uh, his name is Pastor Jason Small. And you may not know this, but we're a part of a fellowship of churches. So we have agreed to work together in a larger body across not only the Western Ontario district, but around uh, Canada and around the world. And so you're a part of literally thousands and thousands of people gathering all across Canada today. And so when we thought of this moment, I thought, I want my friend, our leader, to come and bless us. And so I want you to welcome Pastor Jason Small, our district superintendent. Love you, man. Wow, what an absolute honor to be with you today. This is a day of celebration, isn't it? Wow, this is so good. I just wanna bring greetings on behalf of the Western Ontario District to the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. Say that a few times fast. We're this big family. And I want you to know that today, churches across Ontario are actually praying and speaking blessing over you. That you're part of this bigger family. There's some 350 churches here in Western Ontario District. And then across the nation, we have about 1,100 churches. And uh, in, in Western Ontario District alone, we have about 1,200 pastors. And my job, I got the best job in the world. I get to serve our pastors. Here's what I want you to know. Here at Central, you have some of our absolute finest. You have some of our best leaders. Pastor Bill is, I, I, I've known him for many, many years, decades I've known him. That means I'm old. But he walks with integrity and he walks with care over you like I've, a, a pastor's heart, like I've, I've seen in few. And so I want you to know that you, you have some of the best. I, I want you to know how thankful we are as a district for churches like you. Uh, see, because you're part of the bigger family and, and actually what you do here is, is actually making a difference in so many other churches that through your, uh, through your care and generosity, we've actually seen 50 new churches get started in the last five years. Isn't that cool? 50 new churches. The church is moving forward like never before. We, we care for 17 First Nations uh, churches that are in very remote places in the far north, fly-in communities, and your church is making a difference in those communities. Your church is making a difference in, in world missions. This week, I was, 
I, I was talking with some of our, our leaders in the Ukraine and bringing food and supplies in and your church is a part of making that happen. So I just wanna say thank you. And today, as you have this moment to celebrate this new facility, it really speaks to the best of who we are. As a movement, when you look at us, we have a hundred year history. And when you see us at our best, like there's moments that aren't so good, but when you see us at our best, there's a few things that I see. Number one, I see that, that we're people that serve. When you see us at our best, we serve the community, we love on the community and your church, this building that you've built is just positioned to serve well, thank you. Num Number two is when, yeah, this is so good. When I see you at your best, we're, we're innovators. We're, we're people that, that try new things and, and kind of think outside of the box and, and, and a little bit of the R&D, the research and development end of, of the greater church. And, and what you guys are doing is so, there's so many people that probably said, nah, it can't be done. No, this is never gonna happen. And you guys are doing it. The last thing I see is when you're at your best is, and we as a movement, when we're at our best, is as we depend on God to do the impossible. As we live out and say, God, we're gonna attempt things that can only come true if you do miracles. See, I believe that you only see a miracle when you need a miracle. And you guys have stepped out in faith and in radical ways, and God said, hey, I love that faith and reward it. So I just wanna bless you today. I wanna to speak blessing over this whole region as you're gonna use this facility to, to, to reach tons of people with the truth and the love of God, that you're gonna use this facility to make the community better. I honor you today. I honor your leadership and I say thank you. Can we just pray a blessing now? God, we say thank you for this day. We say thank you for all the hard work that has gone into this day. We say thank you, Lord, for the sacrificial giving of time and talent and treasure. And today we honor the leaders that have been a part of making this happen. And today we just speak blessing. Your word says as those who bless others, they themselves will be refreshed. And so today I speak refreshing on all those who have given to be a part of this. And today we declare that this place for generations to come will be a blessing to the Niagara region. We declare, Lord, today that, that, that for generations to come that lives would be impacted by your love through this place. Lord, today we declare blessing on the leaders who have stepped out in faith and all those who have sacrificially been a part of making this place a beacon of hope and love for the region. So we say thank you, Lord, in your name, amen. On behalf of the Western Ontario District, we say thank you, Central. We're cheering you on. We're, we're celebrating you. Thank you, Pastor Bill. Can we thank our Pastor Jason? Yes, sir. So good, so good. Thank you so much, you may be seated. going. And for all of you in the balcony, thanks for coming. Uh, for those who didn't find a parking space, thanks for finding, yeah, welcome up there in the balcony. We are so glad that you are here today. And again, if, you're, if this is your very first time with us, thank you. We are truly honored. There are many places you could be today and you chose to be here with us. And if we can serve you, 
it would be our privilege and our honor. It really means a lot to us that you are here today. And for those of you who come all the time, you guys are just an amazing family. Great, great days are ahead for all of us. Uh, so I want to start with a question, and the question is, if I were to ask you, how can we change the world? How can we change the world? What would you say? It's a really good question, and you maybe nev never have asked it exactly like that, but you've asked that question. Like, there's obviously something in the world that we know could be, maybe should be better. Because implied in that question are two things. One, the world is a bit broken. I don't need to tell you that. You watch the news. You listen to people talk around you. You've probably experienced brokenness in your own life. But the second thing implied in that question is that we can do something about it. That we're not victims. We're not without hope. There is an opportunity for us to make the world a better place. As a matter of fact, if you're wondering what we believe here at Central, it's really simple. We believe that God created every single one of you in his image. And he created us for this world to make this world the place he dreamed it could be to make it better. But we also believe that love is the only thing that's gonna do that. And Jesus for us is simply the best example of what it looks like to be loved with skin on, to put it that way. And so we follow him. And so how can we make the world better? We can make the world better by trusting in the God who made this world and following him. You know, in the time of Jesus, they asked him a lot of questions. And one day, uh, a young man came up to Jesus and asked him a question because he was a teacher, a rabbi, and so they were always curious what he had to say about uh, important issues. So the guy said, well, what do I have to do to e inherit eternal life? Now, that was just a very spiritual way, a nice way of asking a deeper question. The question really was, how can my life matter? What do I need to do with my life so that it matters, that it makes a difference? And to that, Jesus quoted what is very popular for many of us, you know this. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. If you do this, you will live. And not just breathe in and out, but really live, like have a life that matters, that you wake up every day going, I have a purpose. That's the life that we are after today. And so Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Now also it's one of those things though that we often say and we don't really know what that means. Like what does it mean to love God? And what do we mean by God? That's a really good question. You should ask it. For us, we use the term God to describe the source of all that is. Everything that has existence, everything that has come into being, there is a source that created it. And when we're tapped into that source, we truly live. Just like your lungs, remember I used this last week, just like your lungs were designed for oxygen, so you, the real you. Oh, I'm not talking about the fake you on Facebook or Instagram. I'm not talking about the angle that you got and the filter you used and, and all the, the good poet points of your life. I'm talking about the real you. Not, not the, the bone and the flesh, but the, the real you. The you that sometimes wonders, do I matter? The real you that's looking for something more. The real you that, that maybe cries at night because the world isn't the way it's supposed to be. And life is unfair and it is hard. That part of you was designed to be connected to God. And when God is taken out of that equation, just like if you took oxygen out of this room, we would die, it's the same. It happens inside of us. And for some of us, it's slow. Some of it's quick, but we are slowly dying every time we are separated from God. So when we use this term God, we are simply referring to the source of all that is. I use the analogy of electricity in the first experience. You know, electricity has always existed, but we didn't always have access to it. And thank God we have electricity now. As a matter of fact, if we didn't have electricity, uh, none of you would have made it here today. Uh, we wouldn't be having this moment. I, I don't think our, our culture could survive without electricity. But for a long time, we didn't have access to it until, and if the legend is true, like Benjamin Franklin flew a kite and he noticed that electricity was conducted through the kite string from lightning. 
And then Thomas Edison took that idea and he built a light bulb. And now our lives are better. And that's just like a small illustration. Imagine if your life could be better. Imagine if you could be a better spouse, a better friend. Imagine if you could be a better person. That's what we're talking about when you get connected to the source of all that really is. You become better. So how can you change the world? By becoming who you were created to be. It's that simple. And so he said, love Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And this is where we actually apply it. This is the hard work of realizing that every human being, regardless of where they come from, regardless of what they believe, even if they disagree with us, we're created in the image of God and are worthy of value and respect and honor. It's in learning to love our neighbor as ourselves that we actually can change the world as well. We started this sermon series in Ezekiel. And Ezekiel was a man who lived in the nation of Israel in a very difficult time. The oppressive empire in its day, and there have been many that have come and gone, was Babylon. And Babylon was about to come in and destroy Israel. And Ezekiel looked around at the world like many of you in this room have, or many of you watching online from all over the world, and he asked this question, God, why is this world broken? Why do people suffer? Why is there so much heartbreak in our world? And God's answer is pretty pointed. He says, it's because you're leaders are corrupt. They use their power for their own gain. Your religious leaders are all about personal gain and what they get. They don't care about people anymore. Those with wealth and who run the financial institutions are exploiting people. And the problem is that when those who've been given charge to make the world a better place fall off the rails or are delinquent in their duties, the people who suffer the most are those who are vulnerable. Those who don't have a voice, those who don't have the resources. And so Jesus stepped into this world and he modeled a totally different way of looking at people. He didn't look at your economic status. He didn't invite you to his parties because of how it would make him look on Instagram. He hung out with people that no one was supposed to be with. He touched lepers. And in that day, nobody touched lepers because they thought it was highly contagious. <laughs> he talked to women and religious leaders weren't supposed to talk to women. He invited them actually to be a part of his following. He, he hung out with people you weren't supposed to hang out with, like tax collectors. Remember the story? Maybe you don't, but there's a story where he goes to a tax collector's house and the religious leaders are infuriated. How can this man associate with these people? And I love Jesus' answer. He said, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. That we have been called into this world, yes, to be connected to God, the source of all that is, but the reason is so that we can extend that life and that love to others. And Jesus was the perfect example of this, even to his enemies, for when they were nailing him to a cross and killing him for this idea, this idea that love would actually change the world, that love was what we really needed, that when we learned to love God and really love each other, the world would become a better place. And so they nailed him to a cross because he was a threat to their power, their position, their worldview. But even on the cross, he looked down and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Even in the most agonizing moments of his life, he thought of others. And so Jesus said, how can you make the world a better place? You learn to love God get connected to the source. And if you're here today and you're not connected to that source, we would love to help you in that journey. It's why we exist, to help you connect to God and to each other. But it has to go beyond that into loving those around us, those who are different than us, those that don't maybe understand us or we don't understand them. It starts with a conversation, maybe over a meal or a simple hello. It's, it's this idea that love, God's love will change hearts and minds. And listen, you can change infrastructures, you can change systems, you can throw money at things, but unless the heart is changed, nothing changes. And then he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbors yourself. So Ezekiel says, what's well, the answer? And so in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, the answer comes in God saying, I looked for someone among them who would build up a wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so that it would not be destroyed, but I found no one. 
He uses this ancient image, and of course, if you know anything about the ancient world, um, the way that you defended yourself or your population or your community was you built walls, right? Castles. And when an enemy wanted to take over an area or destroy a people or take them as slaves, they would have to siege the wall. And if they could break through the wall, then the people who were vulnerable would be at their mercy. And so God uses this image. He says, wherever you see people, build walls to protect. And when the enemy comes, ideas, thoughts, anything, systems that break the wall down, stand in the gap. If a siege weapon was able to break through, soldiers would rally and they'd fill the gap to defend those given to their care. And God says, I looked and I saw no one standing in the gap. And the challenge for you and I today is this, who are you standing in the gap for today? Who has been given, who have you been given charge over or opportunity with? Are you building walls for safety and refuge? Are you standing in the gap? Are you fighting for those who cannot defend themselves. This term stand in the gap means to assume a position of active, resolute defense. And so what does this look like for us? Well, we're not perfect. You just need to know that. If you're looking for the perfect church, keep looking. If you're looking for the perfect leader, keep moving. We're not that. We're not trying to build a mega church or massive buildings or a, a massive following for our own sake. No, we simply want to build walls. And not just physical walls, but emotional and relational and mental and spiritual walls that protect the incredible people of the Niagara region. For we believe we've been placed here to make the Niagara region better. That is our mandate, it is our call that we will stand in the gap for those who don't have a voice, for those who feel defenseless, for those who feel broken, for those who feel forgotten, that we will stand in the gap and say, listen, we are gonna fight for you. That is why we're here. And so we take personal responsibility. You've heard me talk a lot enough to know that if someone comes up to me, and this happens often, and they say to me, Bill, the church should, you know, fill in the blank. North Americans are the ultimate Della dumpers. We just love dumping everything on everybody else. It's not my problem, it's not my responsibility. You do it. Government, you do it. Schools, you do it. Police, you do it. It's your job, that's why we pay you. Please never say that. <laughs> It's not true, we all have a personal responsibility to protect our neighborhoods and to protect our homes and our families and our minds and our hearts. We all take responsibility. So when people come to me and say the church should, whatever it is, I say, yes, you should. Because God has called you to stand in the gap. It's why you feel that conviction. It's why you feel that passion. It's why you see what you see. Later in Ezekiel, God will say, I'm setting you like a watchman, someone who stands on a tower and looks for the enemy and warns so people can be safe. So people can be saved. That's why we use that word, saved. That they can find themselves in the loving security of God's amazing love. And in that place, they can find healing and restoration and relationship that they can be connected to God and to each other. And so, as Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Or as a plaque my wife has on the door as we go out, you know, to, one, to the world you might be one person, but to one person you might be the world. So how can we change the world? We can change the world by being connected to God the one who knows the way things are supposed to be and to follow in his way. We can, we can change the world by loving each other, destroying prejudice and racism and inequality, beginning to be champions for humanity again. But that only comes when we take personal responsibility. Love your neighbor as yourself. So how do you change the world? You just say, I'm in. You just say, I will do my part. I will do what I can. I may not be able to do a lot, but I will do what I can to make this world the place I believe God sees it and what it could be. I wanna finish with one story that I have told before, and so if you've heard it before, it's okay, it's worth repeating. But there was a little girl who inspired me. Um, her story starts for me when she's about eight years old. And she grew up in uh, northwestern uh, part of the United States. 
And she was literally born on the, what they call the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, her family didn't have a lot of resource. Her parents were alcoholics, um, abusive, verbally, sometimes physically. Her, her father had been in the Navy and so because of the things he'd experienced, he didn't know how to cope, he didn't know how to handle, and so he'd given himself over to, to a way of numbing, or he thought numbing the pain, but it just amplified it. Because when you're not whole inside, it doesn't matter what you try to change on the outside, nothing will change. It has to be from the heart. And so this little girl at eight years old, had three siblings, and often when her parents would come stumbling in from a, from a night out with their friends, sometimes with their friends, she would quickly huddle them together and they'd go hide in the closet. Hide in the closet so they wouldn't experience the verbal abuse or the pain. They didn't know what to expect, and she waited until they passed out. And then she would crawl out of the closet and try to find scraps of food to feed her brothers and sisters eight years old. At that stage in her life, she didn't know if her life mattered or if it, it would ever be better. She had no reason to believe that. This was her life, this was her lot. This was just the way it was. The world is cruel, right? But then one day, another little girl who understood this principle, that there's a God who can change you no matter where you find yourself. No matter how desperate or dark it looks, there is a light that stepped into this world and can help you find who you were really created to be. And so this little girl just invited this other little girl to her church. It was a small little country church and they just loved people. And for the first time, that little girl walked into a space and she heard a message that she'd never really heard before, that she was loved, that she mattered. The world was great, and she had a place in it. And that day she believed. She was so excited about that, that message that she went home and she told her parents, and her parents came, and her uncles and aunts came, and her cousins and her siblings and her grandparents came, and they all began to believe this new narrative that there was a God who made them, that they weren't trash to be discarded, but they were valuable, worth fighting for. And this little community of faith came around them and built into them, changed them. And in doing that, changed the world. Because that little girl was my mom. And my mom, yeah. And my mom began to believe and she grew up into an incredible woman of faith. She still is. She inspired me in so many ways. The reason I do what I do, the reason I think the way I think is because of my mom and my dad, their influence in my life. But I would have never had that opportunity had someone not really lived this out. Love isn't complicated. It just means opening a door for someone to experience the love of God for themselves, to be transformed by his power. And I know so many of you in this place, I can look at you and you've been changed in the same way because you simply believed that there's a God who could do all things. And so today, how can you change the world? Simply let God change you. And I don't know who you are or where you're at or how broken your life is, but can I just tell you the truth? I have seen so many broken lives healed and transformed and restored. I just believe all things are possible. I believe that. I believe that you can change the trajectory of not only your life, but generations and generations. That's the blessing for your children and their children and their children. And every time I hold my grandbaby Miles, it reminds me of that story, and I want my grandson to grow up in a world where people will love him the same way that little girl loved my mom, and that church loved their family. And so today, who are we? We're not a building. God help us if we make it about that. And we're not a mega church. God help us if we're about that. We are simply a group of people who have chosen to follow Jesus. 
And we're doing our very best to love God, to get connected, to get healed and restored, to be who we were created to be, and in turn to spread that everywhere we go. If we could just make the world a little bit better by letting them know that there's a God who has not given up on our world. You don't have to listen to the news. You don't have to listen to the negative narrative. You can walk in victory because there's a better narrative. God restores all things. And so to Ezekiel, he stood in the gap. He said, I'm gonna be a person who I may not know anything else to do, but pray, I'll pray. And given an opportunity, I will defend. I will be a watchman who sees what's happening and declare the truth. That there's a God who loves you just the way you are, but loves you too much to leave you that way. So how do you change the world? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That, my friends, is how we're gonna change the world. That's how we're gonna change the world. And as a part of our initiative, we have the privilege of partnering with amazing people in our community who are standing in the gap in a variety of different ways. And so we're in a moment, we're going to invite those guests who've been asked to come and join me on the platform. And we're gonna celebrate those who are standing in the gap. And we're gonna make a commitment to them that we are gonna stand in the gap with you, that we're gonna do our part to bring light into areas that are dark, that we might be a part of the, pro- uh, the, the solution and not a part of the problem. <laughs> and we're also gonna partner with other organizations. And so as they come, I want you to watch a video from one of these organizations that we partner with in t- uh, called Community Crew. Watch this as they come. My name is Dave Holmes, and I've been in education for almost 20 years now. And this is my second year as principal of Edith Cavell School in uh, downtown St. Catharines. We're in a neighborhood called Western Hill which is an area that's sort of undergoing some change. There is um, a fair amount of diversity in terms of the households and families within that neighborhood. Uh, We definitely have many of our students who come from lower income families. Approximately 60% of our students uh, live in households that are at or below the poverty line as defined by the Niagara region. Um, But we are beginning to see a a slight bit of a change in terms of new families moving in and acquiring the homes and changing them over. Uh, So we're seeing a bit of change in that, but uh, overall, uh, I would say of uh, the six schools that I've worked at in my career, this is by far the school that has the students who are most appreciative of any and everything that you give to them. So when I arrived at Edith Cavell School uh, two years ago, the Lunch Lunch Angels program was already up and running at the school. And so uh, the administration at that time told me about this. And so I didn't, I'd never heard of such a thing uh, before and I was sort of unsure of what it all meant. And so the first few weeks that I was there and the Lunch Angels came in, I kind of just stood back and let them (laughs) run the show because I wasn't really sure where my spot fell within all of that. And uh, as, I, as I got to sort of see, see them every week, see the volunteers and how amazing they are, uh, I was blown away by the generosity uh, of the Lunch Angels program, the compassion that the volunteers show each week that they come in, and the inspiration that they bring to our building once a week is amazing. Lunch Angels has had a huge impact on our school. Not only are they there once a week providing the nourishable lunches for our students, but they also have come to a few of our assemblies and shared inspirational stories. They've brought guests in that have uh, inspired the students in terms of things that they can achieve in their life. They've helped to stress the positive character traits that are needed in order to be successful in life. So they've had this twofold effect on our building, not just providing the lunch, but also in terms of helping to develop positive, successful citizens for our society. There's there's many, many students that benefit from the Lunch Angels program, but uh, there's one in particular that I'm thinking of who's benefited immensely from it. Uh, he comes from a very large family, many, many um, children in the household. Uh, he's one of seven. And definitely, a, you know, a, from a family that really tries their best. He's probably one, you know, a student who's very well behaved, but definitely comes, doesn't come with much kind of stuff. And what I've found that the Lunch Angels program has done for him is that it's not only had that impact in terms of providing him with a healthy lunch for the day, but it's really helped to improve his character. 
every week when he has a chance to connect with Garrett and have Garrett get to know him and talk to him and ask him how his day went. And when he's away one week and Garrett's interested to know where he's been, that, child's, that child is beaming from head to toe because he's got this person who he sees once a week for only four to five minutes, but has this major impact on his life in terms of getting him into school, wanting him to be there and making him feel so incredibly special for who he is. So that's just one of many students, but he's one that definitely shines out the, you know, for me and uh, the impact that Garrett has had on him has been immense. Uh, for anyone who's interested in getting involved in it, well, if you like to have a positive experience in a school with kids and see smiling faces and feel so fulfilled in, in the volunteer work that you're doing, then I would say get involved with the Lunch Angels program and you're gonna have all of that met because I see, uh, when the Lunch Angels are there, everybody is smiling, the volunteers as well as the students and the staff. So today, we are going to officially cut the ribbon as a celebration of opening. Uh, but we also thought, who could we invite to be a part of this special moment? Men and women who stand in the gap in our community in a variety of different ways. And so today, we honor them for the part that they play, and we also stand beside them, saying we're going to do our part to help you in the incredible work that you do. And so today we have uh, from the NRP Acting Inspector Eric Eldwood, he is here, OPP, Sergeant Tim Schultz, Niagara-on-the-Lake Fire and Emergency, Deputy Chief Darren Trestenko, do I say, I, I hope I said that right, I'm sorry, and Deputy Jay Plato, and St. Catharines Fire Chief Dave Upper and Deputy Parker. And so why don't we, uh, if you're actually here and you're a first responder in any way, we'd invite you to stand right now. We just want to celebrate and honor all of our first responders in this place. Get off it. We also want to thank uh, the contractors. When we were looking for who we could get to be the architects and the contractors, we really wanted to be local. Uh, we wanted to invest in our community that way as well. And so I want to give a special thanks and honorable mention to Todd Rittenhouse, Ari Shipper, John St. Paul, uh, Pierre, sorry, and Bill Day from Merritt Construction for making this possible. Let's thank them. And cutting our ribbon today, in just a minute, we're going to hear from the Lord Mayor, uh, Betty. She's going to come and, and give us that uh, a greeting as well. But we also have here, and I want to make sure I don't forget anybody, because I did in the first experience. It was very embarrassing. Uh, but we have Pete Drost, who, again, was in many ways the backbone behind our capital campaign and fundraising. And so thank you. Thank you, Pete, for that. And this beautiful lady is Trudy Schroeder. She is the chairman of our board here at Central, and, and so she keeps us all on point, and so I think we should honor her today for that as well. Uh, we also honor the Niagara Falls mayor, uh, Jim, uh, the MPP from Niagara Falls and Niagara on the Lake, Wayne Gates, and MP from Niagara Falls and Niagara on the Lake, Tony Baldinelli. Um, and we also have with us uh, Dave Holmes, who you got to see larger than life on the screen. And that, that was a fun experience, wasn't it? Uh, and so he's here as well. I uh, also want to thank Paul Robertson, uh, who, again, kept, kept, he was the glue that kept the thing together. Thank Paul. And, and Grant, who made it happen. Grant made it happen. And so, yeah. He, I also want to just thank all of our, so up behind them we have board members and former board members, those who are with us in this in incredible journey to make this happen. As you can see, it takes a whole community. It's not just one person, it's many people. And so I'd like to thank Barry Wills, Byron Dodd, Derek Snur, Frank Hawk, Jamie Edzinga, John Schroeder, Jonathan Zwier, Lauren Krutbosch, Larry Ledwes, Quinn Hofflin, Michael Pyatt, Paul Robertson, Ron Lopez, Scott Schultz, Sharon Hawk, Sean Ledwes, and Steve Decker. Did I get you all this time? Joe Crusoe, I did you? I got you. I got you. And Joe Crusoe, I did not. There you go. I see you though. And so again, uh, just before we cut the ribbon, what's going to happen is our Lord Mayor is going to come and make a uh, presentation and then we're going to take a picture. So enjoy, um, bear with us as we do that. Uh, and then we are going to cut the ribbon in celebration. And then we are going to go enjoy the evening uh, together. So 
I want you to put a very warm welcome for the Lord Mayor, Betty DeZero. Thank you so much for being here. I am amazed by the beauty of this space and the love and warmth I feel from everyone here today. Thank you so much for inviting all of us. I cannot tell you how honored I am to be here with you today on this special occasion of your community, church family, and the Niagara-on-the-Lake community. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Betty DeSero, and I am have the honor of being the Lord Mayor of the town of Niagara-on-the-Lake. I've been watching and supporting this building project for many years, and I am thrilled to see this dream become a reality. Despite various adversities, setbacks, inflation impacts, and more, like COVID, uh, I have seen the tenacity of this church community to see this project completed, and you should be very proud of yourselves. On behalf of the town of Niagara-on-the-Lake, I would like to extend a heartfelt welcome to this wonderful church family. I am so pleased that you chose Niagara-on-the-Lake for your new home, and I'm confident that your impact will go far beyond our borders. Thank you for seeing beyond these four walls and being intentional about reaching into the community. Not only that, but you have created a space for the community, and that is a beautiful thing. Your kindness, generosity, intentionality is making and will continue to make a difference in our region. We will all be better for having you here. Thank you to those of you who have led this project for engaging with our town council during various stages, for going above and beyond to support our community, and for working so hard to create a beautiful community space that will be open to everyone. Thank you to those of you in this church family who have given sacrificially to this project. Your generosity will have a long-lasting impact. My hope for this building is that it will be a beacon of hope for our community and that those who walk into this place will feel welcome, safe, inspired to be their best selves. I know this church community has such a rich history and I congratulate you in this next chapter. This is an exciting time for you and I thank you for allowing me the honor of being part of your celebrations today. And I also want to thank uh, MPP Wayne Gates and Mayor Jim Diodotti, my colleagues, for being here with us today as well for this ribbon cutting. I can't wait to see the great things Central Community Church does right here at 680 York Road. Congratulations to all of you. Okay. All right, we're going to get it here together, get a good picture. I'll come right in here. Yeah. Fantastic. Please, yeah. <laughs> get a picture. Have you got scissors? Do you want to share the scissors? I've got, I've got scissors here. Yeah, we're just going to, I'm good. We're just going to make sure we get a picture there. <laughs> Who's excited? <laughs> Okay, we're ready. And so, God, we just thank you so much for what you're going to do in this place. We give this space to you. This is a place for you. It's also a place for our church family to grow in faith and a place for our community to experience your love. So thank you. Amen. Amen. In three, two, one. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hey, we did it. <laughs> Golden buzzer. Fantastic. Can we celebrate? What a great day. Wasn't this fun? So good. I don't know if you're excited like I am, but I'm so grateful for what God is doing here at Central. And uh, we're going to just keep celebrating as these guys are 
sort of, and girls are making their way off the stage, but I wanna just give you a couple next steps as you go. First is, if it is your first time with us today, we just wanna especially honor you. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'd love for you to consider the question, what is your next step? And for some of you, it might be really simple. It might just be coming back next week. Uh, I wanna just put it on the record. Next week is Mother's Day, okay, all the men. Just quick reminder, you got one week. Uh, but we're gonna be celebrating with a special guest, Lori Hartsworth, who is a TV host, speaker, author. We, she's gonna be joining us. It's gonna be a great celebration next week. And we'd love for you to consider, for those of you that have been maybe a part of our church family or would like prayer, uh, our prayer team is going to come actually right now as we speak. They're going to be here at the front. We'd love to pray with you. And if you'd like to meet one of our team and have a meaningful conversation before you go, just find somebody with a lanyard like this in the lobby after the experience, and we'd love to help you get connected. Uh, one other thing you may be interested in is this past week we had 100 people uh, that joined a community group called A Place For You. We're doing a four-week group. And it's a great place if you're looking for a place to start, get connected, it was here in our lobby. Again, uh, really special as we had about 100 people here together. And so there's still room if you'd like to be a part of that. Just head over to the website or follow the information on the screen if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, as it's gonna be great this coming Thursday as well. Also, just wanna let you know that today after the experience, if you go outside these doors to entrance B, there are bouncy castles, food trucks, all kinds of fun things happening out there. And so if you'd like to be part of that, uh, that's for you as well. Music's out there. And so we wanna encourage you to check that out after the experience. And lastly, if you did come prepared to worship through your giving today, you can do that as well at the giving kiosks in the lobby. You can also go to our website, or if you're in a hurry, you can tap your card as you go uh, to the right on entrance A as well. So that is available to you. Again, if you have any questions, just text us at 905-937-5610, and you can also scan the QR code on the seat pocket in front of you. Thank you so much for being with us. Let's go celebrate together outside. Hope you have an amazing week. See you back here next week.